Hello to the Sea Awareness online conference. A hearty welcome. Today I'm looking forward to the interview with Pam Longobardi from Drifters Project. I'm very happy to have her in the interview. Hello Pam, how are you? Hi Dina, how are you? Nice yes. to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. Would you like to introduce yourself to the people? Yes, my name is Pam Longobardi. I'm talking to you from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I am the founder and uh, originator of the Drifters Project, which is a global uh, collaborative artistic research project that addresses um, the floating plastic object. And so uh, myself and lots and lots of other participants um, clean beaches, sea caves, and coastal zones around the world to remove the plastic objects which are uh, blighting um, the natural world and to take them and to reinsert them into the cultural context in order for us to look at this material, this material that is part of our daily lives that passes through our hands and ends up in places we don't intend it to. Very interesting. How did you did you uh, um, go with this uh, project first, or was this already from other people in, uh, in initiated? Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean this was this was really a solo sort of voyage for myself. Um, okay. I had been working uh, for years in in Hawaii, um, visiting and and doing other kinds of projects there. But in 2006, I went for the first time to the south point of the Big Island, and there was uh, an astonishing amount of uh, plastic coming out of the ocean there, just, you know, enormous amounts. I can show you a couple pictures because yes, please it, really, it really changed my entire being um, to see this material that was coming out of the ocean. So this was the first glimpse that I had of this tragedy that was unfolding, and... Wow. Uh, you know, I felt like, first of all, that I couldn't imagine how this had gotten there. Uh, I felt like I needed to look at it more closely. I felt like I needed to document it. I felt like I was looking at a crime scene and that there had to be, uh, you know, a forensic <coughs> attention paid to this material um, in order for us to find out its origin, to find out how it arrived there, um, and of course, you know, then what to do with it. So initially I started taking photographs. I took photographs uh, like these ones that I'm showing you um, because I thought it was astonishing. I thought people had no idea what was happening to this material that they use every day and then, uh, you know, thoughtlessly throw away or, or leave behind. Um, but, you know, it's not going anywhere, and and... Um, I think that's one of the most important things we have to realize about plastic. We are surrounded by it in our daily lives. It, you know, I challenge you to, to go, <clears throat> excuse me, go through even an hour without touching plastic. It's very, very difficult. And yet we don't know what happens to it when, when it leaves our hands. And, and what we are finding out, of course, is that it is in the ocean. It's in the ocean in astonishing numbers. Yes, I saw the picture on your website from uh, Lesbos with all these um, uh, orange. What are they called? Life, life West. Yes, it's 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 amazing. It's amazing. I mean, okay, everyone want to arrive safe with what I understand, but it. I mean, Lesbos. Okay, it's a big island, but still there is a, such a huge uh, amount of this. Um, life jackets which just uh, are left behind and I think also the rubber boats they are left behind there as well. Yeah so 10 years into this project um, you know this event of the refugee migration um, from the Middle East and Africa you know is is now well underway and one of the things I think that's important to remember about this is these people initially uh, were the victims of, of climate disasters. It was one of the worst droughts ever recorded in Syria that caused a lot of the um, people who were living outside of the city to move into the city. And from that, 
the civil unrest developed. So I think it's important for us to remember that even these these crises that are happening all over the world um, at some point have to do with climate change. And if we look at what is a culprit in the center of climate change, I would say it's our addiction to fossil fuels and by extension to plastic. So, you know, this sort of endless bounty, which is in my view been pilfered, um, the bounty of the natural resources of this planet have been siphoned off, um, you know, into uh, this, you know, this ancient, first of all, this ancient material that is now locked into these hard plastic objects, um, which, you know, entertain us, uh, you know, pacify us for a certain amount of time and then get lost and go in, back into the natural world where they're having a tremendous amount of uh, deleterious effects. Mm. So I think these are coming to us as symbols and as almost as messages from the ocean itself. Um, these are two dinosaurs that were found off the coast of California. Um, you know, and to me, they, there really couldn't be a more symbolic and ironic object because these are made from, you know, the fossil fuel that was the prior life forms of this planet. Uh, and then turned into this this substance that doesn't really go away anywhere. So, um, you know, I think these are messages. These are warnings to us that we we need to start paying attention to what what we're doing um, with with ourselves, yes. with our life, with the rest of the non-human life of the planet. Yeah. Yes, it's a big problem. It's really a big problem. And uh, also I see, uh, okay, I really try to be careful also myself, but there is a, a, there was a time before I was careful and there is so many, pla so, uh, such a lot of plastic in my house. It's incredible. And when you start to get aware, it's amazing. Yeah. And uh, yeah. because before uh, we didn't think about that this is a problem and... Well, we were we were actually fooled into thinking it was good, um, and this is this is the I think one of the gr greatest sort of uh, travesties of this whole thing is is that you know the plastics industry has made us believe that this material is a safe, b uh, good to use, and c you know this this sort of mythology of recycling, which is that you know you can use it and not have to worry about it again. Recycling does intercept that material from the larger uh, waste stream and temporarily silos it, uh, you know, for potential reuse. However, you know, it's not a very effective um, cycle. Uh, it, it, it can only be downcycled. It's never going to be exactly as, as good as it was the first go round. And it's also very expensive. Um, I'm advocating for going back to some of these materials from the past, like glass. Here I'm drinking my tea out of a mason jar. Um, I don't dare drink water out of plastic bottles. Um, we know too much about it now. There are chemicals in the plastic that shed, meaning the, the chemistry actually gets infiltrated into this, the water that is in that bottle, which then you're ingesting. And those chemicals have properties that cause them to act like uh, estrogen in the human body or in the mammal body. Um, it happens to fish. It happens to uh, sea mammals as well. So, you know, we're changing the actually biological nature of the, of the creatures of this earth, including ourselves. Um, and so I think once we start to realize that this is not innocent material, it's not innocent material for us to use. It's not innocent material to discard um, as it makes its way into a great impact with the natural world that we have to just stand up collectively and just say no more. We do not want to be poisoned this way. We do not want to poison and entrap and cause suffering to the larger uh, networked, connective fabric of life on this planet. Yes. I think it's it's us. We have to stop buying it, so they will stop um, producing it. I think we and we we have to be aware that uh, we are not only one. We are more than one, and we are getting more and more uh, taking care. And 
I think uh, it's not a lot of people they say but yeah if I do it there is a lot of people they don't do it but yes we are already some doing it so and we get more and more and I think it, this is the only way well it's truly a movement that is is underway on this earth um, people are standing up and saying no uh, France just completely banned I mean I absolutely salute France for doing this they completely banned plastic cups and plates and cutlery from their country. Woo! That is a major step. Yes. Um, it's going to change the game. Uh, we have plastic bag bans occurring all over the world. We have styrofoam bans occurring all over the world. So little by little, we are making a change. And, and I think that's the thing that's the most important to realize, that um, you can make choices every single day in your life, either towards or away from plastic. And it's simple things. Um, just remembering to bring a cloth reusable bag to the grocery store and not taking uh, a plastic bag that's offered to you at the counter. And taking even one minute to tell someone why. Why do you care about this? Well, these bags end up in the ocean. They look exactly like jellyfish. They're found in the stomachs of sea turtles, seals, even sperm whales, which are, you know, hunting at the very bottom of the ocean um, have been found with, you know, their stomachs impacted with plastic bags. So, you know, I don't want to participate in this suffering. And so because of that, um, you know, I've changed my habits and it's not hard to do. And, um, you know, I think there's, there's simple solutions just for your everyday life that make you actually walk through the, the day um, with a different awareness that you're, you know, at least mitigating some of your impact um, in a way that causes you absolutely no uh, hardship. And it makes you feel great, you know? So I, I truly advocate for that. I think um, replacing, uh, you know, your plastic bottles with a reusable metal or glass container is a simple thing to do. Water will taste better. You will never have that plastic aftertaste, which, you know, is the chemicals that are going to affect you. And, and the list of diseases which have now been linked to the plastic uh, uh, in, intake and this endocrine disruption that it's causing is really shocking. Um, have you heard about some of these? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not drinking out of uh, plastic bottles unless I really have to. I mean, it, that there is uh, maybe moments where I'm somewhere and I'm not having any water, then I have to. But uh, if I don't have to, I bring my water always also. I have also a little uh, glass bottles and I bring them also with them. And I, some uh, one uh, company which uh, also is very aware about water, they have a special plastic. I mean, it's still plastic, but I got it as a present and I couldn't say I don't take it. <laughs> but uh, I really try, even if it's, uh, I have to be more careful because I cannot throw it around like the, the plastic. But also plastic yeah. can break. I mean, it's not uh, that, the, that the plastic never breaks. Also, this breaks if you throw it around. It's not true. Sure. I think that the, the plastic thing is also something, um, you know, it's very colorful and it's very um, attractive because it has a lot of colors. You go into the shop and you think, oh, it's also beautiful. And then, uh, and then you think, hello, it's plastic, don't buy it. Yeah. I think this is the other bit also why we think plastic is so fantastic because I was in this beautiful colors yes it, it's very sneaky it sells itself to us mm -hmm. um, it it makes us want it and buy it and uh, you know as soon as you you know remove yourself from that you know sort of attraction that's happening um, and then you look at it let me show you something this is a piece I'm working on right here uh, these are you know hundreds of pieces this is a plastic from all over, lots of them from Greece, and I'm talking to you actually while you are sitting in Greece. Um, yeah, but you know, these are things, of course, of our everyday use, and um, you know, I, I I really cringe when I when I see uh, these things out of place in in these beaches and sea caves all over the world and the sea caves, especially in Greece, you know, on the islands that I work on, um, are, are particularly, uh, you know, compacting and, and, and 
this collecting this plastic in the cave. So it's it you know it's it's really kind of weird you know, to go with them and unearth this archive of uh, you know humanity that's buried in there. And um, about the sicknesses we were talking, yes, it's really true. Uh, you hear about many things. Or you, you already mentioned estrogen, but it's also cancer, which it's giving. So, And I think it's very nice. I think San Francisco said that they will stop the PET um, bottles. Yes, yes. Um, and also there, there uh, is you know, a styrofoam ban underway. It's happening in a lot of places. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the some of the diseases that are linked to plastic ingestion are, um, are ADHD, which is hyperactivity, Alzheimer's, breast cancer, lower testosterone in males, a male birth defect called hypospadia, which is requires a baby to get an operation on the penis as as soon as they're born. Yeah, it's a, it's a very um, it's a tragedy, and then of course it never functions properly. Um, and so how is this material, you know, affecting us? Well, it's partly in the materials that we eat and drink our food out of. Um, if you're not, you know, stopping that from happening by not buying them yourself. Um, but the other way is through microplastics. So this little glass jar is actually got a little sample of microplastics, which this was in an area of Hawaii on a beach where I just took a scoop and, and scooped this up. So the ocean has collected and sorted out all of this material of this particular size. Now these are the size of the majority of the pieces that are in the center of these large oceanic currents called gyres. And that is also where, uh, you know, the majority of the food chain is originating. So these, these big areas of upwelling um, are, the, are the home and, and uh, you know, source for the uh, plankton and the, you know, the basis of the food chain. And because now this plastic is so infiltrated in that area, it is also being ingested by the fish and therefore is passed up the food chain along with all the chemicals that are, you know, attached to the surface. Uh, and therefore it has entered the human, human food chain. So um, I personally don't eat fish and I haven't for more than 30 years. Um, I'd rather see fish swimming freely and uh, in their home and leave them alone. Um, but if you do eat fish, you have now an additional concern besides mercury um, and overfishing and all the other, you know, environmental, uh, you know, things that are problems with, with the fishing industry. But you now also have to start worrying about the plastic ingestion and the chemicals, which are uh, heavy metals, um, di dioxins, PCBs, furans, you know, all these persistent organic pollutants, which are the most deadly chemicals on the planet. You know, you're, you're popping a poison pill and, you know, in effect, um, because of this plastic. So yeah, it's, more things to think about. It's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. Yeah. And how did you have the idea to produce something artistic out of uh, plastic? of the plastic you found? Well, I, I, truthfully, I just, I feel like I needed to um, make a change in my own work and I'd been starting to think about how uh, I wasn't even sure I wanted to keep making new things um, for a while. I, I, I felt somewhat burdened by that. You know, I, I, it's something I reflect upon a lot when I'm in my studio. And then lo and behold, I, I discovered this material and I, it's really kind of amazing. So I'm, you know, I'm using this material as the, uh, you know, instead of purchasing new materials, I'm using this as the material of the artwork. So uh, you can see on the wall behind me, this, there's a wall construction that's um, in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of based on a, you know, like a diagram of a urban landscape in a way. Wow, cool. Um, yeah, I'm also working on, um, as I mentioned, this piece on the table, which is uh, something like an evaporated lake. <laughs> so water is all out of it, and, you know, we have these plastic artifacts kind of left in the shape of the lake. Um, these small pieces on the wall are, uh, you know, they're all made from pieces of plastic that I found in Greece this summer, um, quite a bit of them from Lesbos. And uh, after seeing the... Uh, 
you know, 50,000 life vests that were there, you know, I could not get these colors out of my mind. And, and so I started using that as the material and, you know, to, to also talk about the sort of heating that's happening in the world. So, you know, these are all small fires, I guess. Oh, okay. Cool. Fires. So you can see those over there. And sometimes I simply think these objects are actually, you know, these are ready-mades. You know, there's nothing that I could do to this to make it better. Okay. And okay. It, it, this is an astonishing artifact. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can see um, some of the uh, notation that I put on these. I have an archive of hundreds of thousands of objects. Um, this particular one came from the south point of the Big Island. And I think you can see what this used to be at least part of it. This was a plastic bottle of some sort, probably a bleach bottle. You know, we have this classic color oh, that yes. uh, mm -hmm. detergents uh, tend to come in. But because this is from the Big Island, which is an active volcano, an active volcanic island, it has also um, melted lava into that, uh, you know, sort of a composite. And geologists actually have a name for this now. These, they're calling these plastiglomerates. So these are a new type of geologic specimen, actually. Wow. So part of it is is lava, and you know you can see there's there's this turquoise, there's green, there's white, there's red, there's blue, you know, multiple gray, uh, different kinds of plastic that are just all melted together in this one object. Wow. Um, so truly, these are the future fossils that that you know um, archaeologists and and uh, historians will be looking at, you know, and what will they think of us <laughs> in the future? Here's another one. This is um, you know, a, a fusion of lots and lots of plastic sheeting that has turned into a very hard, solid object. I was just thinking the same when you said uh, that it, it's the new um, art archaeology or with the with the <laughs> with the volcano and so i just thought what yeah. what would they, what will they think about us some years later when they find the things of us yeah so, yeah i have a feeling they will think um in some ways that this was a time of great folly um that we were not paying attention uh i think we were distracted um and and we're letting a lot go um, and that pains me uh, quite a bit. You know, I, I, I feel like I, I need to bear witness to this with my artwork. So mm -hmm. um, that's that's what I'm doing. That's great. This is why I wanted to have you in my Sea Awareness Congress because that, that we can see that the, it's not okay. It is sad that this is happening, and but still there is um, art going out of this disaster and mm -hmm. it, it shows that we have to be aware and it, it yeah. doesn't do you don't make being aware like this you make it in a beautiful way with your art and people they think oh my god and this is all in the stomach of the fish and this is all in our seas i think it's a very good way and as you already said that before, we are some people more and more and more people. So I think also you are a positive person and you are on the positive way. And you also, or it feels for me like you are also looking um, in, a, in a future where you think we can change it. I do. I do. And I think, um, you know, we have, we have a window of time right now to do it. The window is not big, but now is the moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. what an honor to be alive right now, to be, you know, part of a change that really, you know, this is my hope for the future, that, that we will look at this time um, from the future perspective and see that humanity did rise up and, ri and rose up in such a way that it changed the future. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's really what I'm interested in. And I'm also very happy that I see a lot of young people which are already changing much earlier than we did or realize it much earlier than we did. And uh, I think this is really great and it makes me very happy. And me also too. Make, make hope, it makes really hope for the future. Exactly. 
It's great. And um, mm -hmm. I hope also to do my part with the Sea Awareness uh, Conference to to get even more people to get aware and they see, oh, I'm not alone. So maybe it is really a good idea also to look that I'm not using plastic and not eating sure. fish anymore. And so... And and also, you know, to, to intercept the plastic that you do encounter. So I think, you know, you can have a you can take a great deal of satisfaction out of um you know, when you see plastic that's gone astray, uh even on the street in a city, if you if you interrupt that voyage, it's on its way to the sea. So, you know, by just simply picking it up and, and preventing that from going down the storm sewer or into the river, which will eventually end up downstream in the ocean, then you've, you've, you've prevented that particular piece of plastic from harming a bird or a sea turtle or a whale. And, you know, that's an amazing thing, you know. There may be a hundred billion other ones, but that one that you did something about. And so little by little, everything adds up. You know, and so you go and clean a beach and you've taken out 300 pieces. Imagine that. That's 300 less pieces that's going to, you know, get into a bird's stomach. Um, so you have, you know, impacted in a positive way, uh, you know, the, the future of that particular trajectory. Um, and it gives a good feeling if you if you think I have done something. Sometimes, okay, it's also frustrating. You go to the same beach maybe after the next storm, and you say, okay, I start from the beginning. But okay, that's life. It's life is yeah. like this. So, but uh, for me also, it gives a good feeling if I collect things from the beach. And uh, sometimes I feel also I I find nice okay. wood, and it's also nice to with um, driftwood. It's also beautiful to to do some uh, things to paint or do some some work or art with it. So it's yeah. not only the plastic. You you find also other things you can you can use. Exactly. I find useful things all the time, you know, that, again, you don't have to go and buy new. Um, you know, I think more and more we're, we're going to need to go that way, and I think it's, it's, it's frugal. It's more like nature. Nature does not waste things. It, it, everything is part of another thing, so it, it transforms into another uh, life form or, uh, you know, support system for the life forms. Um, you know, so I think we can be you know, take a lot of lessons from the natural world. And, and I really do feel like, you know, at this moment, the ocean is, is truly in need of, of, of our attention, our assistance, uh, and, and that it's communicating with us through these objects, you know, to, to pay attention. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. What you suggest the people, what they can do? Okay, we already were talking in uh, uh, other interviews about the plastic bags. If you go to the shop, but what are things? What you, what you suggest to the people? What maybe you have uh, more, um, uh, more ideas also? Well, I'm going to grab something from my purse. Just one sec. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so as a conscious human, let me suggest that you make yourself a kit, okay? And this is something okay. that you can carry around with you uh, in your backpack, in your purse, when you travel, and just any kind of movement in your daily life. Okay, so first of all, I have, in this case, it's a mason jar. I also have a um, metal water bottle that I've misplaced somewhere. It's right around here. Um, my Lovely assistant Susan is working over here now. She is showing her. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> She's awesome, and she travels with me everywhere. And, oh, great. Uh, Right-hand girl. Yes. Okay. So in my purse, here is what I carry, and this is something that prevents me from having to ever use plastic silverware, and it's bamboo. So I have an entire uh, cutlery set here. Oh, for chopsticks. And these are the bomb. They're fantastic. They're made of bamboo. Bamboo is naturally antiseptic. So, um, you know, I don't need to worry about 
scrubbing this with boiling water and soap. I rinse it or I wipe it off. I, this has been in my purse for two years. Um, I would, I hesitate to say how many times it has not been washed. <laughs> <laughs> I have never gotten sick from this. And I think, you know, first of all, we are stronger than we think we might be. Um, and second of all, second of all, this is a very incredible natural material that has properties, magical properties that prevent it from making you ill. So this is something that you can get online. It's called to go wear to go wear to go wear. There's the label. Okay. Okay. It comes in this great little, uh, you know, canvas, uh, container and it has a little clip. You can clip cool. it on your backpack. Or just keep it in your purse. I was able to bring uh, hundreds of these um, from a donation from the company um, who owns this Chico bags, who is also a manufacturer of really nice reusable shopping bags. Um, and, you know, they donated these to the camps, the refugee camps, and I was oh, able to make a delivery. Oh, yeah. Very useful uh, things for, you know, these, these people who have their whole life has been disrupted. So get your reusable bags. Get a kit like this. I don't have to eat off of plastic utensils, which are thrown away. And I know that we've all seen the, um, and if you haven't, I highly urge you to Google this, just extremely difficult to watch um, video of a sea turtle getting a plastic straw extracted from its nose. I know well, it, I know it. <laughs> where they found a fork, a plastic fork. So it's excruciating to even imagine. Uh, I don't want to ever use a plastic fork again, and this is what, how I get around that. Great. And you know, there are also fantastic conversation starters. There are stainless steel straws, which are another thing. I actually usually have one in here, but I gave it away. Um, so, uh, you know, you don't have to use these plastic straws. And, you know, they're, they're really, um, you know, simple things like that. So... I would challenge everyone who might be watching this to, to just take these few small steps and, you know, in the beginning you're going to forget because you have other habits well ingrained, which is to not think about this kind of stuff. It just takes a couple times. And I'll share with you my story about how I got myself in the habit of bringing my reusable bags to the grocery store. Uh, you know, for the second or third time I had them in my car and I ended up in the store at the checkout without my bags and I said, Darn it, I'm not going to take another bag. I'm just not going to do it. So I made myself carry all the things. It took me five or six trips. <laughs> I'm coming back, but I'm not taking a bag. So uh, believe me, I never forgot my bag again. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. So, yeah, we have to put ourselves sometimes into, you know, retrain these, like, automaton-like habits that we have. And, um, and you know... You lessen your, your carbon footprint. Um, I, didn't, I, I really did not know about these bamboo things. I think this is really great because I do not like to eat with plastic things. And uh, it is really great if you have it with you and it's not heavy. If it's bamboo, it, it cannot be heavy. So it is it's a really not, great thing. Yeah. It's really great. Yes. Well, I'm happy to share this with you, Nina. And um, no, this is great because also I I learn in this um, uh, conference. I learn so many things, and I'm very happy. Also, I know a lot of things, but this is something new for me. Great, and, fantastic. And I was invited lately. I was invited in a party, and there was all plastic thing, and it was really it was it was making. If I had known, I had taken my things from my home with me because it's yeah. also not nice because everything breaks it's yeah. not a nice way of eating this is what i what uh, what i found in this moment that that i was bothered uh, of the way of eating because it's not a nice way of eating because the plate it's not strong enough so you always don't know you spill all the sauce over you because it's not uh, not hard enough and it's not a nice way of eating i don't enjoy it it's not a nice way of eating. I agree. And and even, I mean, okay, I know about the plastic, but you know, when you're there and you don't expect that there is plastic things, so you don't, I mean, you don't go everywhere on each part, you go with your plate. But um, yeah. if I had known, or in next time I will go in this place, I will ask, 
do we have plastic or do we have normal plates? <laughs> and if there is plastic, I will bring my things because I don't I like it. I don't like it. Yeah, and I think, you know, it might cause a moment of discomfort for someone, but, you know, I think to, to think about the greater discomfort of the, you know, the horrible things that this plastic is doing to you, the sea creatures and and ourselves you know we can we can bear the other much better and you know take the moment to just explain why why it's important you know to to not participate in this uh you know yeah i mean i also i have i have brought uh, there there was a they gave me something in a in a paper bag and i said okay if they have to give it in the paper bag if they cannot give it like this I bring this paper bag each time I bring it back for my little croissant. And then she looks at me and she says, where did you get this from? I said, it's from the last time. I, I, I keep it. <laughs> she, think I, she thinks I'm very silly. But they have in Greece, they have this thing. They give you a croissant. Okay, it's a croissant. They put it in a paper bag. They give you some... Um, serviettes with it so that, that you can clean your mouth yeah. so uh, t tissues or whatever and and a plastic bag this is how you get one cross one croissant so i no. t i tell them i don't want the tissues i don't want the plastic bag and i bring <laughs> and she thinks i'm very yeah. funny but they know they know it now <laughs> so it's very That's funny so the the, the so girl which uh, walks barefoot and uh, bringing her pla <laughs> paper bag <laughs> i think it's also for me also sometimes it's just funny i I don't do it. I don't go in and say, you know, everyone, you give everyone. A, I just do it. I think it's much better. Yes. Uh, you know, and then you make an example. And, uh, you know, the next time someone else might follow you. I mean, that what, that's what happens every time, you know, cleaning a beach. People start to join you and they, you know. I mean, there, there is this aspect of sort of discovery about it that's interesting. I think, you know, we are naturally collectors. And... So why not collect, uh, you know, this toxic invader from the beach instead of, you know, the natural seashells and things that belong there? Leave those for the creatures. Yeah, but and it's really funny the, which things they are arriving in a beach. It's really funny. So from the it's really from the flip flop over, I don't know what. Sometimes you find very very funny things, and you think where they have come from. And I, yeah. I, I was also talking to someone living in Portugal, and he said uh, he started to make a collection of the water bottles because he has from uh, which he found mm -hmm. in, in the beach. And in Portugal, he finds a water bottle from Japan, from I don't know where, where very far countries. Yeah, that's crazy. It's, it's really crazy. And he said, okay, he doesn't know if it comes from the sea or if it comes from the boats. We never know, but... Um, well, from the boat into the sea, uh, you know, I think somehow the, the poor ocean is uh, having to take all this assault, you know, and, and uh, I think we just have to think more about the effect of these tiny actions we take, tiny and large, um, every day. So, yes. Nina, I, 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 um, I wondered if you had any final questions questions for me yes i would like to ask you if uh, you what, what you say to healing energy of the ocean because this is my favorite question well i would say that the ocean to me is is the soul of the planet it's where uh life started on this planet it is the cause of our climate it is the source of most of the oxygen uh it it is the originator of our weather, and it, you know, it's this sort of conscious entity, um, which is, it's not water, it is life. It is life in its most bountiful and creative. And so, uh, you know, we have to, we have to consider this um, incredibly powerful and miraculous substance um, and place and network of connected beings. Um, and so I learn all my greatest lessons and I see my most miraculous things in, in, in the sea. And, uh, you know, it, it's beautiful chemical uh, composition 
which echoes our own blood, um, is so healing. And, and uh, you know, so we have to take care of her. We have to cherish this and, and protect it and, uh, you know, keep it for the future. Great. I thank you so, so, so much for your time. Well, Nina, you're extremely welcome. And um, we send our love and greetings from, from Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> thank you so much and have a beautiful day. Well, you have a beautiful day too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.